Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy Easter, Warehouse Church. Come on, let's go. It's Easter. Right. He is risen. Our let's go. He is risen. Yes, this is like the biggest Christian celebration of the year. That's right. We're so glad that you're joining us. And yeah, I'm ready to celebrate. How about you? I'm, so I'm ready to celebrate right now. Let's go. All right. Let's get the word, before. Matthew 28. Come on, let's get, come on, get your Bible out. Let's go, let's go old school, get your Bible out. Matthew 28, after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There is a, a violent earthquake. Can you imagine that? A violent earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Hallelujah. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. Praise God. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. Can you imagine that? Wow. Whoa. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. How about giving Amen. God glory with his word today? And how about giving God glory that his son our Lord Jesus Christ, guess what? He wasn't there. He is risen. He came back and walked this earth for 40 days after resurrection, performing miracles, signs, and wonders, hallelujah, before ascending to the Father. And I'll tell you what. So what you're saying is this is just the beginning. Yes. <laughs> I guess if this was the NCAA basketball tournament, I guess we would be in the final four. <laughs> right. You know? But we win, ultimately. Yes, there's still work <laughs> to be done. Jesus still is going to walk the earth. And then the Holy Spirit's going to descend down to earth. And guess what? Then we have a guide for life. And praise God, I'm not going to preach all morning, but praise God that we have the opportunity to come to a house of God, to make your house a house of God, and worship the King. Yes, amen. That's right. What a powerful start. That's right. Hit him with the scripture right out of the gates. <laughs> That's right. Praise God. I had a couple verses I wrote down, not nearly as exciting as impactful, but it is a good mention of why we celebrate Easter and how, like, what, just a little bit of a side look into the, you know, celebration of Easter and the foundation of Christianity. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14 reads, and if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. And then verse 17 and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, you are still in your sins. So the whole belief and foundation of Christianity is based on the belief that our King was crucified and resurrected. So it's so important. Right. I mean, if we don't truly believe that in our hearts, right, and, and understand the scripture, then like, why are we even doing what we're doing today? So I would just, um, you know, encourage each one of us that we have so much reason to celebrate that Jesus died on the cross and it goes back to yep. Pastor Dak's message. I've thought often about his message last week about remembering Lot's wife and how Jesus didn't just die on the cross right. for our sins for nothing, for That's us right. to continue to carry um, that weight and the burden of yeah. past sin or past guilt or shame or whatever it is. Like we can let that go. We know that Jesus already died on the cross for that. So why carry that? So. Hopefully you can walk in freedom today knowing that. Hey, first off, why don't you take time right now and share this message so important that the folks you run with, you know, you, you just may have crossed somebody at work a couple of times this week. Take time and share the message. We have a message of hope today. We have a message of joy today. We have a message of peace today in our Lord Jesus Christ. So take time and share our message. But yes, Pastor Dax's message last week powerful preaching you know aren't we blessed i mean our church is blessed oh for sure Absolutely. our pastors come pastor Corey, a couple sunday nights ago i mean yeah. he preached and we were we were just amazed by how god has blessed us so when pastor needs a time out guys yeah. can step up and Absolutely. bring a word but how about pastor dak last weekend there's there's no looking back yes and sometimes and i've been there sometimes our attachment to the past gets in the way of the future. Sometimes those things we used to do in the past that God's saying, get them out of here. You're done with it. Come on, leave it behind. Sometimes those are a roadblock from moving forward. And I just love how Pastor Dak put it in perspective 
that you know what? We all have the opportunity, and that opportunity may be today. That's right. To look forward and to move forward. And if you've not had time to check that message out, you may be new here this morning. You may have been here a couple weeks. Please take time and download our Warehouse app. You can go back in and check out Pastor Dax's messages and also previous messages for the, from the last couple of years. Such an important time in our church's history as well. We have the opportunity to move just, a, I think Pastor said, a mile and a half down the road. <laughs> yes, not far down the road. We've been blessed. We signed, well, Pastor yeah. Justin signed on the papers on Friday, on Good Friday. What better timing that we'll always be able to remember that and reflect on that. Um, so yeah, he's pretty excited. We're all excited for a new beginning. Um, but yeah, we're ready to open the doors to allow right. more room for people to come in and receive salvation. It's not about the size of the building, having a bigger building. It's about having more people and more room available to receive salvation and without restrictions on space. So. Yeah, God has entrusted us to continue to be a steward of more people. Praise God. And you know what? If you don't know what we're talking about, and if you want to check that out, simply visit the warehouse.church. The vision is online. Our pastor's vision is online. Ways to get involved is online. That's right. They're in the house. They're on platform today. They're and they're hosting. Praise God. And take time this week and visit the warehouse.church. While we're at it, let's go ahead and talk about Vibrant. Vibrant's coming up April 12th. Come on, yep. be ready. Our Vibrant women are coming back into the house to gather together April the 12th. That's going to be a Friday at 7 o'clock. There's going to be some food trucks. Uh, we'll give you some more details about that beforehand, about what time the doors open. Usually it's around 6.15, 6.30. Um, but just mark your calendars for Friday, April the 12th, because we want all of our women together. So if you've been watching online, we want you in the house with us. Um, it's always an incredible night. We right. always get to hear a message from Pastor Heather and worship together and just be together as like-minded believers. And so it'll be um, an incredible night. So make sure you mark your calendars for that. I want to keep planting the seeds of visiting the church. I mean, come on, what an opportunity for you to come down on Friday. You can even come Thursday night, stay at the Blunder House in downtown, stay at a place across town, call the church. We can help you with lodging and guide yeah. you in the right direction. You can stay the weekend and go to church that Sunday morning. And what an opportunity to come to Parkersburg and be with us in the house of God for our women's event. <clears throat> Guys, you can just stay back in the room, take the kids swimming on that Friday night. And then while the ladies come to the house of God on April 12th. Yes, awesome. Praise God. Hey, well, how about this? Now, you know we got to take some time and do this or that. Well, yeah. On Easter. Easter edition. I mean, as you guys are sharing the message, Let's do a little bit of this or yeah, that. I'm it's time ask the for first you to participate, question. though. You have to participate in the chat. That's right. So we want to hear from you as well. If you don't do it, it looks weird. Like, it don't make any sense. <laughs> well, it's not as much fun. <laughs> and we want to see the answers, so. All right, so I'm going to start this one because I know the answer with my wife. Yeah. Chocolate egg, chocolate bunny, or a peep. Marshmallow Which one? peeps. Now, I know, obviously, go right ahead. No, I was just clarifying, like, Marshmallow peeps, is that, yeah. Yes, marshmallow peeps. I don't know what other kind of peeps there are, but. <laughs> well, that's what I'm at. <laughs> So I know that my wife likes, be okay, so we have, well, what kind of peeps have we had the last couple weeks? Um, Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper peeps are great. Cotton yep. candy is my favorite. Cotton candy peeps, yep. If I can't find cotton candy, I'll settle for the birthday cake flavored marshmallow birthday peeps. Birthday cake peeps, I had one of them, they're pretty good. Yeah, but honestly, like, the rest of them are good too. But I really prefer the cotton candy peeps. So, <laughs> anyhow, I'll give you my mailing address. <laughs> we got about a minute before we get to start praising God. We got time for one more. Okay. Uh, while we're waiting, while we're waiting, a couple things. Number one, you can start putting in chat your prayer requests. I want to remind our online campus that we have a team of people specifically that are honored to pray with you. So please, throughout our message, go in and put in your prayer request. How about this? Pink, purple, or blue? Pink purple or blue. I'm going with purple today I'm going with pink. for royalty. I'm going to see my pink jeans. That's right. I got pink jeans on today. Hey, <laughs> Warehouse Nation, please continue to share our message. It is going to be an awesome day in the house. Make sure you stay on after for the post. We're going to come back and talk about pastor's word and how we can apply it to our life. We love you. Have an awesome morning. See Let's you soon. do church. Let's go.
first time. You know, the first time you were there. Humor me. I was out on Andrew's old sloop. I'd had a bad night. At first, I didn't even know it was him. Remember? He, he was just sitting there. <laughs> Eating lunch with all the construction workers, cracking jokes. <laughs> I was uh, on my way to Jerusalem. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All of this is just, uh, it's difficult to talk about. Yeah, it uh, reminds me of how much I miss him. But we have to. I know. <laughs> it just, I talk about him to others every day. It's difficult with all of you. It's, it's different with all of you. I can hardly remember a time when I didn't know him. I was in his inmost circle. He loved me. He loved all of you. You just feel the need to talk about it more often. I prefer to treasure these things in my heart. Philip just said, come and see. And I did. And look, I, I don't know how to describe it other than he knew me before he knew me.
feel your spirit stir. I've been praying, you've been working, working it all for you. So fan the flame and keep it burning. Cause you'll be finding Yeah.
Lord, we love you. God, we're grateful today. Easter Sunday. God, we're thankful for the power of the resurrection. God, we're thankful for a song like that to remind us and to preach to us that there is no body in the grave now. And, and because the grave is empty, God, you've defeated death, hell, and the grave. And Lord, you hold the keys. And so, Father, we're thankful to, today, God, that no matter where we are, how we walked in here, uh, who convinced us to come, how they got us here, God, we're just grateful that we made it into the room today. And so, Lord, if there are people here that are on the outside looking in in faith, that what was just going to be a normal Sunday, God, the Holy Spirit, will you, will you begin to work on their heart? That this whole day was organized just for them? That there's nobody too far gone, that there's no sin too great, no past too great that your grace and your blood can't cover. And so, Lord, today, would you move on the hearts of your people? God, we're thankful that we have a church like this, a room like this, that we've deemed a sanctuary, a place, God, where we can come and meet with you and hear from you and and so today, God, we're expecting nothing less than that to take place. Lord, we love you today. We honor you. We worship you. And we give you praise. And it's in Jesus' name I ask it. And everybody says amen. Amen. Clap your hands one more time. Come on, you give an Easter clap. So thank you so much for being here on Easter Sunday. You could be a lot of different places uh, doing a lot of different things, but you're here with us. And I want to fix this podium. They got it way too far back, but we'll get it, we'll get it there. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm grateful that you're here and uh, thankful that you chose to spend part of your Easter uh, weekend with us. And it wouldn't be the same if you weren't here. And so thank you so much. I also want to invite you back next week. It's great that you're here once, but, uh, you know, it's better if you come back. And you get planted. The Bible says those that get planted in the house will flourish in life. And so uh, we do this every weekend. We celebrate every weekend. We high five every weekend. We park cars every weekend. And so here's what I'll tell you is, uh, is you, your life will be better if you get planted in church, period. And if you don't like this church, come find me. I'll help you find another church. I just want to tell you it's important, especially in this culture, in the day and age that we're living, that you are planted in a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, life-giving church. And so more than just once a year, more than just twice a year, but there's, there is power in consistently showing up to the house of God. And uh, anyway, I'm excited that you're here. Why don't, you, why, don't, why don't you, before you're seated, why don't you find a few people, shake their hand, tell them it's great to see them in church. Happy Easter, by the way. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Well, praise God. Well, before I jump into the message, this is the time where we uh, continue in our worship through our tithes and offerings. And so if you're a guest today, be a guest today. There's no, no pressure from us to give. But for those of you who call Warehouse your home and faithfully show up and faithfully give back, we all know this is a time where we, we, we present our tithe and offering. We know everything that God, everything that we have comes from God. And so we want to be faithful stewards to give back to God that puts us in the right position and the right posture to receive increase. Amen. Come on, it's, God is after, not after your money, he is after your obedience. And so the, the Bible teaches very clearly that, that we're, we're called to bring 10% back into the storehouse, to back into the church. And so today we're going to give you a chance to do that. 
And if you're new to giving, we're going to put some ways up on the screen so you can take part. Uh, you can, we're going to pass the buckets here in just a minute. You can put cash or check. If you're making out a check, you can make it out to the warehouse church or simply uh, TWC. Uh, if you want to give on our app, you can get our app and click the give button. You can also go online. You can also text the word give to 97,000. It will shoot you back a link to walk you through on how to give. But figure out what is best and easiest for you and to be faithful in your giving. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give. God, we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't present this offering backwards. We don't take an offering backwards. God, we, we, we take it boldly. We give it freely. We give it boldly. And God, we give it willingly knowing, God, that when we plant a seed in your kingdom, God, we, we know that we can expect and stand on the harvest, God. You're, the Bible says you give seed to the sower. And so, Lord, we thank you for a church that knows how to give. God, we thank you for a people that know how to be generous. And God, we know that the Bible says the world of the generous gets larger and larger. So God, would you expand the world of the generous today? Not so that we can get rich, but God, that you would bless us so we could continue to bless and continue to, to move this church forward. And God, we thank you for every gift. We thank you for every, every giver. God, would you bless it and multiply it as we continue to build your church. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. And everybody says, amen. As they're taking the offering, I got some great news. Those of you that have been with us for the last four or five weeks, this past Friday at about 12 o'clock noon, uh, we signed the closing documents on our new building. And so it's official. We bought a building. And so praise God. And so don't get too excited. The work, that was the easy part. Now comes the hard part. And so we'll talk about more on that in the upcoming weeks. But um, we, we, have a, we have a building to renovate. And we've got a space to occupy. We've got a city to reach. And we've got a region to impact. And so I, we got, we got work to do. And so for those of you like, what are you talking about a building? What did you do? Uh, we bought the original Lowe's of Parkersburg right down by the toll bridge. It's about 72,000 square feet of building. And so we'll no longer use the excuse. We have 700 parking spots. So parking ain't an issue. Space ain't an issue. We have about 13,000 square feet of kids space being renovated. That's no longer going to be an issue. And so what I'm trying to tell you right up front warehouse church is we have no more excuses to offer God why we can't change this city and impact a region. We got all the building, all the space we need. All God is looking for is a little bit of workers and a little bit of people that are willing to go fishing for lost people so that we can build God's great church right here in the middle Ohio Valley. Amen. And so some great news, I'll share it real quick. Pastor Dakota preached a great message and we, we were a little bit shy of our goal of, uh, we wanted to raise 400,000 for, for the down payment. And at the nine o'clock service, we had a great generous family that gave a check for $30,000. And we hit our, we didn't just meet our goal, we exceeded our goal. Come on, God is in this project. And so, And so people are like, that's a lot of money. No, that's a lot of seed. And uh, they got it right. It ain't, it ain't, they ain't giving it. They're investing it. And they know what the Bible says. That's a, that, is a, that is a big window in heaven. That's like, a, that's like a 20 by 20 garage door in heaven, not ready to lift so that the blessing of God will be poured out on their life. The Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. And so we're excited this season for our church. I, I'm, I'm super excited. Why? Because God is entrusting, not, not me, he's entrusting us with more and I'm um, grateful for the opportunity it's exciting right it's exciting and so you can drive on that lot but don't go in the building we will arrest you but you can go on that lot I'm kidding it's ours baby you, I, I, I pulled in there Saturday I said I said man we own this building this is unbelievable I mean anyway praise the Lord everybody just just picture this in 12 months, maybe, hopefully by this time next year, our first service will be Easter weekend and the brand new building. Come on, brand new asphalt, brand new auditorium. So thank you for each family, whether you gave a nickel or whether you gave the third, well, no matter what amount you gave, let me tell you something, it mattered and it helped us reach our goal. And so we wanna celebrate you and your generosity and uh, because everybody did their part, come on, we signed the papers this week and we did what people said could not be done in a city like this. And so praise God. 
Okay, let's preach. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. I'm going to jump around a little bit for time's sake, but if you have time today, I, I would dig into this, this entire chapter carried over into Hebrews 10. It'll be good for you. Hebrews chapter 9, starting at verse 6. It says, When everything had been arranged, the priest entered regularly into the outer room to carry on the ministry. But only the high priest entered into the inner room, and that only once a year, and never without blood, which he offered for himself and for the sins the people had committed in ignorance. For the Holy Spirit was showing by that that the way into the most holy place had not yet been disclosed for as long as the first tabernacle was still functioning. For this is an illustration for the present time indicating that the gifts and sacrifices being offered were not able to clear the conscious of the worshiper, verse 11, but when Christ came as high priest of the good things that are now already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made with mere human hands, for that is to say is not part of this creation. For he did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. But how much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. And finally, verse 22, and we'll end our reading today. Sorry, verse 28. No, no, let's go to verse 22, 22. And in fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. Catch this. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. God, we're grateful for your word. We're grateful for the Bible. We thank you, God, that when we read it, it is revelation. God, it is, it is impartation. God, it, it gets in us as believers. God, that's the way that you speak to us is through your word. God, if we want you to speak to us, God, we got to get in your word. And when we read it, God, you begin to speak and minister. And so, Father, we, we pray that you take this text today, that you would open up this text, that you would, you would speak it. And, God, you would, you, would, you would divide it and place it into the lives and hearts of people where they're living. God, that we may walk out of this room not different, but changed. And, God, we thank you in advance for the power of the word and the work of the Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus' name I ask it. And everybody says amen and amen. If you're taking notes, I've tagged the title this morning, Benefits, Benefits of the Blood. Benefits of the Blood. I love today. I love Easter Sunday. I love all that it is. I love all that it represents. But can I tell you, the reason that we can party on Sunday is because Jesus said yes on Friday. What, what, what happened on Friday made what happens today possible. But if Jesus would not have said yes on Friday, we wouldn't be here in the same celebration that we are today. But how many people are thankful that Jesus was willing to say yes on Friday, come on, to make something happen on Sunday? I, I love Easter Sunday, but I also love looking back at the sacrifice that Jesus made, not only for me and not only for you, but for the entire world, and not just for our present sin or our past sin, but every sin that we would ever commit is under the blood of Jesus. Friday, let me say it this way, Friday fixed our main issue. The main issue we're facing in humanity is this big honking neon uh, sign called sin. Sin separates us from God. It's, it's what separates us from God, the love of God. It's sin. It gets in the way. It's, we're all, the Bible says we are, we are all born into sin. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And Friday, when Jesus went to the cross, Friday fixed our main issue. Because the biggest issue we had today is not only me, but you. We are all sinners. We've all crossed the line. We've all messed up. We've all done things we wish we wouldn't have done. We've all said things we wish we wouldn't have said. We've all reacted in ways we wish we wouldn't have reacted in. We have all partaken in things and done things that we, if we could, we'd go back and undo them if we could. We are all in this same spot today. We are in this life and living in this land of sin. Make no mistake about it, I, I have sinned in my life. 
I am just the president or the pastor of the jacked up people of the warehouse church. I am in the same posture and the same position. I'm just as jacked up as you are. I was just dumb enough to say yes to the call of ministry. And so we find ourselves today all with this problem called sin. And Friday, when Jesus hung on the cross, come on, Friday fixed our main issue. Jesus Christ crucified, hear me, meets our greatest need. We don't need more money. Well, we do for the building, but we don't need more money. We don't need more friends. That's not our greatest need. Our greatest need was fixed on Friday with Jesus being crucified. Our greatest need, our most fundamental need as people, as humans, we were in need of a savior. If we had needed money, God would have sent us an economist. If we needed wisdom, God would have sent us a philosopher. But when God looked at the earth that he created and saw the fall of man and saw there was, there was a block between him and his creation, he knew that we didn't need an economist. He knew we didn't need a philosopher. He, he, what he knew is we needed a savior that would come and live and die on a cross and shed his blood and go to the grave and overcome death. He knew we were in need of a savior. I'm, not, I'm telling you, Friday, don't, don't, don't devalue the importance of Friday. But his blood, when Jesus shed his blood, it was for the purchase of our sin. I've got it wrote down this way. Jesus died so we don't have to. Jesus, Jesus was the sacrifice. He paid a debt that you and I could not pay. We couldn't work. We, couldn't, we, could, not, we could never pay, pay back our sin debt. You understand that today? Like it, does, it doesn't matter how much money you have, how much influence you have, how many good deeds that you've done. Jesus knew that we could never pay back the debt that our sin cost us. And so Jesus knew that the only way to redeem humanity was through the shed blood as he hung and died on that cross on Friday. Come on, we racked up a bill. Some, some people's bills are longer, but it, it's, it's not. We, we all have a bill that we've racked up. We have all fallen short. We have all messed up. Can I tell you, we are all in need of a Savior today. And as I began to study this, I, see, I'm, I'm a church kid. I, I grew up in church, raised in church. I, I, I spent my whole life in church. I grew up, I grew up hearing great preachers preach about the blood. You, you, you can watch some preachers today, but watch some preachers next week. You know what's not being talked about no more in culture? The blood. But I grew up hearing great preachers preach about the blood. And I sang old great hymnals. I know I, I don't look uh, you know, young enough, but I grew up singing songs like the blood will never lose its power. And I remember we had old, old gray hairs in the church that couldn't sing a lick, but they would belt out that hymn, and, and there was power, come on, when they began to sing out of those old hymns that the blood would, and I just come to remind you today, the blood has not lost its power. I sang songs growing up about nothing but the blood. And I've come to remind you, you, you can gain the whole world. But there ain't nothing but the blood of Jesus that, come on, that can cover your sin. And how about this one? I wish I had a piano player that could play these because we sing them as a church today. How about this? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? I don't know the rest of it, but I remember those two lines. But I grew, up, I, I grew up hearing these songs and they're in me. You understand? Because I was raised in church and came to church. It's what was in me 30 years ago. I can still go back and pull from the things that my parents brought me to church. And just because I was in the environment, you hear me today. So I get to study this idea of blood. And why was there so many preachers preaching about it? Why was there so many songs sang about it? And I... I, I discovered in the Bible that over 700 times blood is mentioned in the Bible. David referred to the incorruptible blood. Blood was used in the Old Testament as a sacrifice or an offering for the payment of sin. 
Peter spoke of the precious blood. John wrote of the overcoming power of the blood. Jesus mentioned his blood sitting around the table at Passover. We're told in Leviticus 17 verse 11 that the life of the flesh is in the blood, not just physically, but also spiritually. That is, in, in the natural, if your blood supplies, it, it, it supplies life-giving oxygen and nutrients to every cell in your body. And we also know that if the flow of blood is cut off to, a, to an extremity in your, in your arm, it will eventually start to die and decay. And the same is, is true in the spiritual. If we have areas in our life that we have blocked the blood, you will begin to lose part of your spiritual nature. Are you following me today? There is still power found in the blood. I found out that your blood also carries away wastes and toxins from your cells. Spiritually, without the blood of Jesus, your life and my life would be filled with filth, just like that of the Pharisees. I went went on to study and found out that our body that God has designed, by the way, we we do believe that God made man and woman. We don't, we don't believe that we somehow got Adam's foot. We don't, no, no, no. We believe that God was a creation of the human body and he saw fit to, 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 to make it with white blood cells that fight off sickness, that we have natural remedies already inside of us to fight off every virus that comes our way physically and spiritually, by the way. And we have these white blood cells, come on, that will start destroying the invaders. And so when your natural blood is healthy, you are protected from disease, but when you, are, and you, when you are spiritually healthy, the same is true. There's not one thing that the devil can bring against you that the blood of Jesus isn't sufficient to overcome. And so I just want to remind you today that, that there is still power in the blood. There is, there is absolutely, without a doubt, benefits of the blood. Number one, if you're taking notes, I'm going to give you four real quick and we'll get out of your hair today. Number one, the blood established a new covenant. The blood established a new covenant. In the Old Testament, it was normal for an animal or a lamb to be sacrificed upon an altar as an act of worship to God for the means of atoning for sin. The Old Testament, they were always looking for the blood of an animal or the blood of a lamb and they always were looking for the spotless lamb. And how many people know when Jesus came, Jesus came, there's referred to as the spotless lamb in the New Testament. Jesus came not to get rid of the Old Testament. He, he didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill the law. Jesus was, was the fulfillment of every Old Testament pro- prophecy that you will find in this book. And in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, you would have to you would have to you would have to work your way to God. You would have to you would have to go through a priest. And the Old Testament, there was still a blood covenant, but it was a covenant that was designed around the shedding of the blood of an animal for the sacrifice or the atonement or the payment for sin. But when Jesus shows up and says, "I am here to establish a new covenant," can I tell you the new covenant is great news for people like you and people like me. Like we no longer have to operate under the old law, but now Jesus came to fulfill the law, not not to get rid of it. The Old Testament still works. There's still commandments, thou shalt not murder. How many people know we should follow that commandment? We're not going to get rid of the Old Testament and say it's irrelevant. No, the Old Testament is just one big honking neon sign pointing to the coming of Jesus. And so a new covenant, hear me, is great news. For an old covenant would require you and I to be oppressed under the law. We would have to work. We would have to go to a man in order to get to God. Old Testament created physical obedience. They were all about works. They were all about the outside. They were all about what you did and what people thought and how you dressed. The New Testament is all about spiritual obedience. Jesus is not saying it doesn't matter how you act. But Jesus knew, i got to get into the inside that will in turn affect the outside. We're not saying that just because grace is here, you can, you can still sin. That's not what the Bible teaches. But the Bible teaches if I can get your heart right, it will eventually take care of the outside. But in the Old Testament, the Old Testament people were always consumed with how well do you look? How many tassels do you have? What do other people think? What rank are you? And Jesus came, walked onto the scene and says, you know what? I am here to get rid of the old way and invite people into a new way because Jesus knew it's all about the heart. It's the heart. It's the heart. It's the heart. Jesus was teaching and all of his teachings, it was 
It was about if he can get my heart right, if he can get your heart right, your body and actions will follow. If he can get your heart right, your language will follow. Because if your heart's not right, you'll cuss and not even think about it. But if your heart's right, you won't say those words because they won't sit right with the Spirit. But Jesus, if I can get your heart right, you're not going to think perfectly, but you're going to think differently. Because if he can get our heart right, our mind will follow, our steps will follow. If, he can, if we can begin to learn to, to love God right, Jesus knew that we cannot love people without first loving God, and we cannot first love God without loving people, and we don't love on the outside, we got to go to work by loving on the inside. Jesus came on and said, I know you used to celebrate the old ways, but don't, don't get so caught up in celebrating how well people look on the outside, but learn to rejoice when you, give, when, when, when you forgive freely. Learn to rejoice when you give freely. Learn to rejoice when you start thinking the right. Learn to rejoice when you begin to love unconditionally. Jesus knew that i got to go to work on the inside. We have a church and a world that is focused on the outside. That's why we have Instagram. That's why we have Snapchat. That's why we have 500 filters on our phone. Why? Because we are addicted to the outside. And Jesus knew that if, if I can just get somebody's heart right, if I can just change their heart, if I can just get my love into their life, it will change every ounce of their being. It will change the way they operate. It will change the way they treat people. Jesus knew that I've got to get to the heart of the people. You know why we have so many people in the church today? that are absent of fruit in their life? Why do we have so many churches that are judgmental and hateful and closed off? Let me tell you why. It's because we have grown to be satisfied with bringing our body to church but leaving our heart in the car. And the devil is okay today with your body being in the room but your heart still being in the car. Because if your heart is not changed, it does no good to change the body. We, we, G, G, Jesus, knew, Jesus, knew that, Jesus knew that in order to have true change, change, true change does not happen on the outside first. It happens on the inside first. Salvation happens not on the outside. Salvation happens on the inside. Come on, when I was saved in 1997, it didn't happen on the outside. I felt the call of God on the inside. I felt this pulling. I felt this conviction. And I found myself humped over in altar in front of hundreds of people sobbing uncontrollably. What was Jesus doing? He was giving me a new heart. And because he changed my heart, he now began to change my life. And so Jesus came to bring a new covenant. A new covenant is it's great news. It's encouraging news. Think about it. If we have to still operate under the Old Testament, how many animals would die on the daily because of my sin and because of your sin? There would be no humane society in Parkersburg. I mean, I know some of you think you're good and perfect today, but no, you're a sinner just like me. And if we had to sacrifice an animal every time we sinned, can you imagine every corrupt thought you ever thought had to be brought under the blood of a shed blood of an animal? Aren't you grateful today that we have a new covenant? In the old covenant, you would have to come to a priest and tell the priest everything, kind of like the, kind of like the Catholics, but that ain't really biblical. Because Jesus brought a new covenant that we don't got go to a man and confess our sin, but the veil was torn and now we can go boldly into the throne room of grace. In other words, we have complete access to the Father. Could you imagine having to come to me and tell me all of the wicked thoughts that you think? How much fun would that be? I would not need to study for another sermon the rest of my ministry. But aren't we grateful today that there's a new covenant? People come all the time and say, preacher, I want you to pray for me. And I'll pray for people. But can I tell you, I don't have a special line from God. He did not give me a special number for being a pastor. I've got the same access you do. 
I've got the same connection you do. What I want to teach our church this year is learn to lay hands on yourself and pray healing over yourself. Learn to lay your hands on your kid and pray a a blessing on your kid. Learn to walk around and speak blessing over your family. You don't got to have the pastor do it. I'll do it and I'll put oil on you and I'll believe in faith, but I ain't got no special line. And so Jesus, come on, Jesus brought a new covenant. That's great news, isn't it? That we have access to God one-on-one. How amazing is it? Think about it. The God of all creation. When you ask him, he hears you. We can walk daily with God, our creator. Is that not mind-blowing? Well, preacher, I prayed it it didn't didn't come to pass. You gave up too early. Just because it doesn't, doesn't happen instantly doesn't mean God's not working it. But we have access. We get a daily walk with God. We get a daily communion with God. Preacher, I don't really hear God talk to me much. When's the last time you opened up the book and read it? Like God, will, if, you, if, you, if you open up this book, I promise you, he will speak to you. You'll read scriptures and all of a sudden you'll see a TV on the commercial about the scripture. It'll be like, God, are you trying to tell me something? Yes, he's trying to tell you something. You mean he'll use a commercial? If he used a raven to feed Elijah under the juniper tree, don't you think God maybe used a commercial to grasp your attention? But we're under a new covenant, and that's good news. There's no more dotting I's and crossing the T's. Can I tell you, like being in the new covenant means we don't have to work our way to God no more. God knew no matter how much we work, we could not get to God. And so God knew they ain't never going to get to me, so I'm going to send my son to them. And so he see bankrupted heaven, and Jesus came to earth, and we know the story. Why? Because Jesus wanted to bring a new covenant. Number two, the blood brings, protect, the blood brings protection. Come on, we need, we need the blood of Jesus to protect us. Exodus 12, Moses called the elders of Israel together and said to them, hey, go pick out a lamb or a young goat for each of of your families. I need you to slaughter the Passover animal, drain the blood into a basin. Aren't you glad we're not in the old covenant? Drain the blood into a basin, then take a bundle of hyssop branches and dip it into the blood and brush the hyssop across the tops and the sides of the door, door frames for your houses and so that no one may go out through the door until morning for the Lord's going to pass through in the land and strike down the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the top and sides of the door frame, the Lord's going to pass over your home for he will not permit his death angel to enter your house and strike you down. God was telling Moses that I need, I, need you to, I need you to apply the blood to the door frames of your house. So when the death angel comes through to kill the firstborn of, of every family, when he sees the blood, the blood will be a marker that this is a household of faith. That when the blood will be a marker that these people know the power of God, it'll be a marker that this house has it figured out, that they have applied the blood to the doorpost and even know the death angels in the neighborhood, the death angel's not going to come knocking. And I've come to remind you that there is absolutely protection in the power of the blood it brings protection come on here's why i want to say it the devil might tempt you but if you have applied the blood he can't touch you i'm not saying if you're under the blood i'm t- i will say this knowing the bl- knowing about the blood and pleading and applying the blood is two different things Knowing about the blood is one thing, but knowing when I plead the blood and when I apply the blood, that's different. I'm not saying that you'll never be attacked. I'm not saying that you'll never go through a struggle. No, that's in the Bible that temptations of many will come and difficult days will come and you get used to going through hard days. It's not that we will not go through hard times, but the Bible says to let, to, to, To not touch my anointed. What is the anointing? Not the gift. It's the blood that is covering that of the person following Christ. And so I just want to tell you, there is protection in the blood. There's protection. People say, man, this world's getting crazy. I can't believe it's getting bad. How much? Can I tell you? It has been wrote in this book ever since it was written. It's not going to get better. 
Darkness will keep taking ground. Darkness will continue to do what darkness does. Bad things are going to happen. Culture and society are going to continue to push their godless agenda. It's going to happen. It's been wrote about. Our election will not fix the issue. Another election will not fix the issue. But I want to tell you is, but the blood of God applied to your life will fix the issue. They're going to keep coming after your kids. They're going to keep pushing their, their crazy indoctrination. Can I tell you, apply the blood on your kids. Apply the blood on your family. Apply the blood on your front door. I'm not saying go home and kill a heifer and drain the blood into a basin and go get an oak tree branch and start. I'm not saying that. But I am saying symbolically you might go get some olive oil. Yeah. Now your neighbor's going to think you're crazy, but hey, when that death angel comes through, my house is covered. Some, some of you, you need to take your kids along the journey today. Go get some oil. We're going to anoint our front door. Just reminding the devil, if he wants to come pick on this house, this house has already pleaded the blood. See, I, there's not a day goes by I don't plead the blood of, of Christ over my kids and my family. I, I know that knowing about the blood is one thing, but there is power when you learn to plead the blood and to apply the blood. How about this? Number three, the blood gives us authority. The blood gives us power and authority. Revelation 12, 11 says this, and they have defeated him. I can stop right there. They have defeated. I'm not an English scholar. I'm not very good at writing. I'm not really good at literature. I barely, I had to pay my senior teacher to give me an A in her class. I'm not that good at literature, but I do know past tense when I see past tense. Defeated means we have already won the battle. This is the Bible. Revelation 12, 11. They have they have. That's me and you. That's our church. That's God's church. Those of us that are in Christ Jesus, saved by his grace, covered in his blood. That promise says we've already defeated it. It gives a whole new revelation to oh, although the weapon may be formed, it will not prosper. Why? Because we've already defeated. The Bible says they have defeated him, lowercase h, which tells me that's not a proper noun. But that's something that's not really important. Him being the devil. So what the, I'm just trying to help you today. They have defeated him by the blood of the lamb. Not just the blood of the lamb. Hold on. Not just the blood. It says this. And that tells me there's something else that's got to go with the blood in order for us to defeat him. This is where you and I come into play. Because our blood can't help, but his blood can and they have defeated him by the blood of the capital L, Lamb, that means Jesus, and by the word of their testimony. And testimony is a fancy word for a story of life change. And everybody here, when you come to know Jesus, you have a testimony, or you have a story of God's amazing grace, how he changed you, saved you, and redeemed you. And so the blood gives us power and authority. And I was studying, I, I was studying, preparing this, this sermon. We were out of town and spending a few days away. And can I just tell you, I hate snakes. Hate them. I, a couple of things I'm going to ask Jesus when I get to heaven is why does Mexican food make you fat? And why did you leave snakes on earth? You ever wondered why everything good for you tastes horrible? But every, maybe it's just me today, but that's, just, that's, that's the question. I don't wrestle with theological issues. I wrestle with things like, God, why do Oreo cookies put rolls on my stomach? <laughs> just one of the questions I'm going to ask him when I get there. But I was like, man, I hate snakes. And I always say this way, like, the only good snake is a dead snake. You can cut its tail off right behind its head. 
I'm just one of these guys, call me weird, call me super spiritual, but I know in my life, in our family's life, that any time that we have, we have, we've had snakes on our front porch, and any time that we have a snake in our midst, we know that it is a sign that something is about ready to attack our life. And I'm telling you, every single time it's taken place, it's a big warning sign for the Holy Spirit saying, hey, brace yourself, something bad's about ready to happen. Whether it be somebody betray us, whether it be somebody spread false things about me, whether it's something we got to make sure we got our eyes on. And I'm just one of these guys that believe, I, 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 I just despise snakes. We happen to be in South Carolina, the rattlesnake capital of the world. I'm just trying to get a little sun, trying to get my mind ready for Easter. And everywhere I go, there's these big yellow signs, beware of the snakes. How can I relax <laughs> everywhere I go like the devil is a liar? So I begin, to, I begin to just study the snake, and I begin to study the snake bites. And we live in West Virginia, so we have rattlesnakes, we have copperheads, deadly bites, right? If you don't get to the hospital quick, it can kill you. So I started studying anti-venom and come across this story that in Thomasville, Georgia, is the rattlesnake capital of America. It's the center of America's snake belt. Snakes there, they're everywhere, from suburban garages to sugarcane fields. For a, near, a nearby town even has a rattlesnake roundup, count me out. <laughs> Where the serpents are gathered annually, not to kill them, but to have their lethal venom milked. Milk the venom and kill them. That's a picture of some of us. That we capture the sin and we milk it, but we don't kill it and we release it only to come back six months later and start attacking our life again. But in this leafy Georgia town, the research shows that a local hospital treats a snake bite every fourth night. And Thomasville may be in the thick of the action, but research shows that it is, it is miles and miles and miles and miles away from the hills of South Wales where the most radical advances in anti-venom technology have been discovered. Scientists have discovered that the blood of sheep are immune to snake bites. You don't got to be a preacher to preach that. Research. This is not something I made up. This is not some Christian. Pro I, found, I found the worldliest of worldly professors and scientists, and I've taken their material, and I'm preaching it God's way. Says that they are immune to snake bites. In fact, a sheep's blood is now used to make the antidote for snake venom. To make the antidote, sheep are injected with a snake's venom. In other words, Christian people are faced with an attack. We are born into sin. We wrestle with sin, but we have natural antibodies by the blood of Christ already within us that gives us the power to overcome every snake bite that the enemy has sent our way. Could it be, could it be why John 129 makes so much more sense to me this morning? That the lamb who takes away the sins of the world how does he do it? He does it by the blood. Come on, the blood not only gives us power, the blood not only gives us authority, but the blood actually gives us a chance to have our sins forever erased. There's power in the blood. Please understand, it's not that your life's going to be perfect when you get saved. Your life just now comes under the authority and the blood of Jesus Christ. It means you don't ever have to work your way again, but you are saved and your sins are covered. That's what the Bible says. And so today as I close, I just, I, I want to I ask you today, is, is your life under the blood? Is your heart right? Because Jesus' blood can cover your sin. If we could have did it through works, 
he wouldn't have shed it on the cross. If we could have did it through money, he wouldn't have shed his blood on the cross. But because Jesus went to the cross and he shed his blood, can I tell you if it was just me or if it was just you, he still would have went to the cross anyway? And Jesus knew that it one drop of blood, not just to pay my sin debt for yesterday or my sin debt today, but he said, I'm going to go to the cross and I'm going to make a final payment once and for all. For all of humanity, whether they accept it or receive it, my blood will still be good to cover it. And so today, with every head bowed, every eye closed, this is your moment. I got us to this place. And now it's your chance to respond. There's people here today that if Jesus would come back or something tragic would happen in your life, you don't have the assurance that your eternal destination is in a place called heaven. And I wouldn't... I couldn't say that I, I've done my job if I didn't give you a chance to get right with God today. So with nobody looking around, maybe you find yourself today, you've tried everything the world has to offer. You've tried every drug. You've tried every sex act. You've tried every bottle. You've tried every relationship. You've tried every shrink in town. And no matter what you do, you still wake up every morning empty and void of purpose. And I just simply want to give you a chance today. I'm not saying that you're going to be perfect today when you find Christ, but you will be changed. You will discover new purpose. And so maybe for the very first time, people are going to get saved. Maybe you're here today and you've been in and out of church 30 years, 20 years, 15 years. Maybe it's been for, since COVID you haven't been, but today you're back. And there's just something good about a fresh start. There's just something good about a new beginning. Not debating whether you're still saved, but I am saying there's power in rededication. I want to give you that chance. And so in just a moment, I'm going to count to three. I'm going to give you a chance to respond by simply raising your hand. I'll acknowledge it, and we'll lead you in a prayer together. The prayer will not save you, but it is, it is, it is the response to the salvation call that seals this moment in your life and your heart. So on the count of three, let's respond in faith. One, two. Three, I need Jesus today. Yeah, hands are shot up immediately. You keep them up. 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 Anyone else? I love the boldness. Instantly, those hands went up. You're not waiting. This is not a time to play games. This is not a time just to, no, no this is a decision that will change your life forever. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Yeah, keep them up. Keep them up. Keep them up. Here's what, I want, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to simply say a prayer. Where else, church? Would you repeat after me as well? Those of you that have your hand up, simply repeat after me as well. Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I admit that I am a sinner and I need your grace. Please forgive me of my past, of my present, and of my future sin. I confess today that I am in need of a Savior. So God, would you save me? Would you fill me? Make all things new. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation and for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's jump up on our feet. Come on, we had about 20, 20, 25 hands. Come to find Jesus today. Come to find Jesus today. Where's that packet at? Yeah. Yeah. And hey, let, let me help you. I'll hand it over to them in just a minute. But I want to I tell you, like, it's great that you were saved, but I don't want to leave you right there. Our church don't want to leave you right there. So we have, we have this awesome packet of free Bible of what's your next step. Hey, I just got saved. What does it even mean? I know he's talking about snake bite. I don't even know what it means to be a Christian. This, this, is, this is designed to help you. 
and, and we can we can dive into that. There's gonna be a team of people at the front of this at the front of the church after after you're dismissed. You can go out and hang out, but come back and get a Bible. Connect with somebody. Uh, find somebody with a lantern on. They'll get you a Bible. But here's what I want to encourage you: Don't just find Jesus today and peace me out and see me next Easter. Come back next week. It's important. I promise you, your car will not hit your driveway before the enemy starts to attack you and say, you know what, that was all hype, nothing really changed your life. No, no, no. You bring him back to the place where the blood covered your sin. And I want to encourage you, whether you come back to our church or not, I don't really care. I want you to come back to the greatest church in America, by the way. But if you don't want to come back here, come see me. Come see one of our team. We will find you a life. Not every church is life-giving. And we want to make sure you get planted in a Bible-believing church. Amen. Pastor Dak, come dismiss us, man. Come here. Come on, Marissa. Praise God. What an awesome message today from Pastor. Hey, wasn't it so good to be to be in the house together today, to be in our living rooms together today, and to worship the Son of Man, our Lord Jesus Christ. That's so good. Praise God. Hey, please, please take time and connect with us this morning. You can go to Next Steps, and within our Next Step, you go to our app, and within our Warehouse app is Next Steps. You can connect with us there. Let us know you're new here this morning. Also, let us know if you made that decision to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Come on. You're not meant to do life alone. Connect with us. We have a team of people here to connect with you. What an awesome message today. Benefits of His blood. I loved it. I think the simplicity of it, I mean, we can complicate this all we want, but the simple fact is Jesus shed His blood for our sins. And I love that he emphasized the need to share a testimony in that one scripture, uh, yeah. John 1 29. Um, I marked that one down on my notes and it, it was important that we also, we plead the blood of Jesus, but we also share a testimony. And I think yeah, that's, that's good. something that you can do today as you gather with family members. Some may be believers, some may not, some may be on the fence, but you could take that opportunity today when you gather for lunch and you gather around the table together, whatever your festivities are, um, take that time to just have a, a casual conversation about how yeah. God has moved in your life and, and how things are different now for you than they may have been beforehand. So um, I think I'm going to try to engage in some conversation today with some of my family and, and just be thankful that we're given the opportunity to do that. Well, it's important. I love when pastors preaching, I guess some would say it old school, but guess what? <laughs> it never changes. Yeah. We, Preach about the Lamb, preach about the cross, and preach about the blood of Jesus Christ. I mean, come on, let's go. Yeah. And you know what? We get that opportunity to apply the blood of Jesus to our lives and, and plead the blood of Jesus over our situations and lay hands on ourselves and anoint with oil. It's what the Bible says. And I just love it when Pastor comes in, preaches about it, and teaches us that it's the right thing to do. And while the world is going wonky crazy, <laughs> that we can come back to these basic principles in the yeah. Bible. Uh, yeah. So important. And also, what else is important? We want to make sure that you know we're back here at 11 o'clock today. We're yeah. live again in the auditorium, and we're live again online. You're invited. You're invited to come into the house of God. We'd love to see you here. The only Absolutely. thing we ask is if you see us, say hi. That's it. Yeah, that's right. And it's we'd not love too to late. see you come back at 11 o'clock online. If you can't make it, to the house of God, but it's so important, uh, especially when it's Easter time and I believe the Spirit of God is moving and you don't even have to say a lot to people. Uh, it's a great time to go back and share this message and continue to share future messages at 11 o'clock. And maybe this is your first time watching online and you're just curious. Um, yeah. You know, next weekend is not too late either. Like, that's right. you gotta start somewhere, <laughs> right? So. Come and join us next weekend because we will be back in the house at 9 and 11 right. next Sunday as well. So. Praise God. What an awesome day. We will see you back online or in the house at 11 o'clock today for my beautiful wife, Erin. I'm our online campus, Pastor Matt and all. We love you. Have an awesome week. Happy Take Easter. Care.